an Emacs document. Now let's look at a man page. Again, we'll just do LS, and I'll show you how to search through this. So this is more like a VI window because it's got that colon down there, and the way that you search through a man page is just like the way you search in a VI document. You hit the forward slash, and you can see the colon down there turn to a forward slash. Then you type the word you're looking for, hit enter, and now it finds the first instance of that word. Okay, if you want to find the next instance, you hit the N key for next, and now you uh, see the next instance. Hit N again, you see the next one. And uh, if you hit N again, it says pattern not found, press return. I can press return, and I'm back to the colon, and I can just hit Q to quit out. So in summary here, the info pages I think are better for new users just because the information's organized a little bit better, it's more categorized into various sections. So if you're just browsing and trying to learn things, the info pages I think are more conducive to that. The man pages might be nicer for experienced users because all the information's you know, just in like one window and you get to search through that window, you're searching through the entire man page for the command. Whereas when you search in an info page, maybe you're only searching on the particular page of some subcategory and you're not searching through the whole thing. So it just depends what you're doing. If you're trying to learn things, I think the info pages are better. And if you're an experienced user just trying to pinpoint one precise bit of information in the whole document, then maybe the man pages are better. I just remember this experience that I had like in 7th or 8th grade or something. I turned in this paper, and, and it was in the days before word processors and spell checkers, and I typed this paper out and, on like an old school typewriter, you know? And, uh, and, you know, I turn the paper in, and it's like a three-page paper, and the teacher finds like 20 spelling errors or something. And she writes at the bottom of the page, uh, you know, get a dictionary and look the words up. And I turned around to her, and I said, well, how am I supposed to look the words up if I can't spell them? <laughs> so it, the dictionary is kind of like that for, for spelling, right? Like, you can't just, like, look a word up to determine how to spell it, because you have to know how to spell it to look it up. And obviously, you can guess and stuff, but the man pages are kind of like that, too. Maybe there's a command out there that does something that you want to do, but you don't know the name of it, so how you you're supposed to look up the manual page for it. So the way that you can do that, uh, roughly, is use the man minus K option. And what this does is, um, I'll just show you an example. I'll do man minus K JPG to find out commands that work on JPEG files, for instance. Okay, that's like those picture files. All right, so uh, here's two commands that have JPG in the name of the command. Man minus K will find all the commands that have JPG either in the name or in the description of the command. Okay. Another way to do this that I usually remember more easily than man minus K is to say apropos. Okay, here, let me do it J-P-E-G this time to expand my search. Okay, and now you'll see I found a few more hits here. Okay, so here's all the commands on the system that either have J-P-E-G in the name of the command or in the description of the command. Okay, or both. All right? And this is just a very useful tool to, you know, to find new commands that you don't know the names to yet. Now when we get around to installing the system, you'll see a lot more about the super user account, but I just want to show it to you right now. Um, you know, typically for your normal operation on the system, you're just going to be some regular user like the Perry account here. But, you know, when you need to do system administration tasks like, you know, install some new piece of software for everybody or add some new user account or something like that, you need to be a special user on the system called the super user. And if you're privileged, if you're really the administrator of the system, then you switch over to be the super user account by typing SU. And then what you do is you type in the password for the super user account, which I'll do now. And then if you're uh, privileged, what it's going to do is it's gonna, if you have the password right, you're going to get into that account. And you can see now I'm logged on as the root account. Okay, that's the name of the super user account. So now I can do things that I couldn't do when I was Perry. I have privileges to read all the different files and directories on the system. And I can run certain programs that I couldn't run uh, when I was just the Perry account. Okay, so this is like the administrator's account, uh, or, or the super user account it's called, and, and this is what you're going to use to do those special things on the system. And like I said, we'll talk about this more when we uh, actually do the installation, and then later on through the video series, when we're talking about administration stuff, you know, we'll always have to switch over to be the root user to actually do these tasks. Now what I want to do is I just want to give you a quick little tour of the Linux directory structure. And we'll do this again later once we know a little bit more about Linux and we'll go into more detail then. But for right now, I just want to show you a handful of things about how things are organized in, in, in the Linux system. So let's go up to the very top level directory and we do that by saying cd slash. Okay, and this will take us up to the very top level directory of the directory hierarchy here. And I do an ls there and you'll see a bunch of subdirectories. So, so now let's just talk about a couple things. Okay, so uh, 
these directories can, are supposed to contain certain things. And if you understand what they're supposed to contain, then when you go to look for something, you'll be able to find it more easily. If you need to put something new on your system, you'll know where to put it, you'll know where not to put it, that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's just talk about a handful of these. The bin directory holds binaries or executable programs. And if we go down into the bin directory uh, from, from this level directory here, we'll do an ls and you'll see a bunch of commands in here. And it's a bunch of commands, you know, a lot of the commands that we've already learned are in here. The cat command, uh, the ls command, the remove command, the pwd command, the vi command. They're all in the slash bin directory. So slash bin holds like the most common executed programs on the system. It holds, uh, you know, the stuff that normal users use on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so that's what's in the slash bin directory. Now let's go up a level, uh, back up and do an ls again. So we, so we talked about the bin directory. The boot directory holds stuff to boot your system. Home is where, uh, you know, the user's home directories are located. Uh, the op directory is where you install optional software. Uh, the root directory is actually the root user's home directory. So the root user here has their own home directory. It's not under slash home. It's under slash root, okay? Uh, and, and there's a little terminology conflict here because some people call the slash directory the root directory because they think of the directory structure as a tree, which it is, and, and, and you know, this is like the base of the tree, so, so that they call it the root. All right, but you know, this is some people also call this directory the slash root directory, the root directory. So if somebody's talking about it or you're reading it in a book or something, just be careful and clarify exactly which one it is, whether it's the slash directory or the slash root directory that they're talking about. And then there's the slash sbin directory, which is kind of like the counterpart to the bin directory. It holds, again, executable programs, but the S here stands for system. So these are like, you know, system administration tools or, or programs that, that will be used by system administrators, whereas these are used by normal users, the stuff in, in the regular old bin directory. Okay, so, so what I want to do also is just go into the user directory real quick and show you one more thing. And like I said, we'll talk about all this later, you know, five or ten videos down the road. But I just want to give you a brief overview here. So there's also, in the user directory, there's a bin directory and an sbin directory. So, so let's just put it this way. As a normal user, you're going to execute programs, and they're going to be in one of two places. They're either going to be in slash bin or user slash bin. And then as a system administrator, the programs, most of the programs that you execute are going to be in slash sbin or slash user slash sbin, okay? So the normal user stuff is in the bin and the system administrator stuff is in the sbin. And then, you know, it's either in slash or, or slash user depending on, on what it is, okay? So, uh, you know, like I said, later on in the video series, we'll talk more about this whole directory structure. We'll explain, you know, more details. But for right now, you need to know where these programs are located. And now what I want to do is show you uh, how to configure some stuff through user configuration files. Now what I want to do is go back and show you some user config files uh, and, and show you how to modify them to make your life a little bit easier for, for the moment. Uh, but when you modify your own user configuration files, you don't want to be the root user because that's going to mess up the permissions a little bit. So what you want to do is you want to be, the, you know, you, you want to be logged into your own account when you're messing with your own configuration files. So you can see I'm still logged in as the root user because we did that su command. So what I'm going to do is type exit and that'll get me out of being the root user. Now you can see I'm back to being the peri user. And I'm also back in the directory that I was in when I typed the su command, okay? So I'm back in the home peri directory. So I'm just going to clear the screen here to reduce the clutter a little bit. And I want to do uh, an ls-a to show you uh, all the different user config files that are in here. And the ones that I want to talk about right now are a couple of the ones that start with .bash. So first, let me show you. All the things that have a tilde at the end here, these are all old versions of these files. The newest versions are the ones without the tilde. Okay, but if you mess something up while you're editing it and you, you saved your changes by accident, you can usually go back and get the old version by, by you know, getting the one that has the tilde on the end. Okay, so that's, that's one thing to note. Uh, I already told you that the .bash history file kept a track of all your previous commands so that you could cycle back through them with the arrow key. Uh, and then there's the bash profile and the bash rc file, and these are like configurations for the bash shell. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what's this bash shell that you're talking about? Well, the bash shell is what you're interacting with every time you type a command in this text mode interface. Okay? When I type ls-a, the bash shell is taking that and running it and, and basically giving it to the operating system to run. It's your like, intermediary between you and the operating system in, in some sense. Okay? So the bash profile, uh, the dot bash profile and the dot bash rc is where you can configure some properties of the bash shell. 
Now what I want to do is I want to go into the bash profile. You should VI it because I want you to edit something in there. And so we'll VI dot bash profile. And mine's already changed, but I'll just show you what, what you should have in there so that you can change it too. It's all about this path variable is what I want you to set right now. The path variable, or the, this is basically just like a preference. 